everyone, Megan O'Leary here in Boston, and I am joined by one of the stars of the co-main event, Benson Henderson, who faces Cowboy Cerrone this Sunday on Fox Sports 1. We're going to talk for one round, so we're going to put five minutes on the clock. Ben, let's see how much we can fit into this five minutes of time. Let's do it. You go from Eddie Alvarez, somebody you haven't ever fought before, to Cowboy Cerrone, who you've beaten twice. What was the mindset going from, from Eddie as an opponent to then Cowboy? Let's do it. Sign me up. Not the biggest deal in the world. It is a change of opponent. It is two weeks notice, all that sort of stuff. But my job is to go in there and go beat up whoever they put in front of me. And it doesn't matter if it's Eddie Alvarez, Cowboy Cerrone, or, or whoever. You haven't been in the Octagon since August, so are you just excited to get back to work and be able to perform? I am a little bit. It's been a little bit of a longer break for me. Is it harder, though, to get up for an opponent like Cowboy who you've beat twice? Your winner, Ben Smooth! Or is it just the same for you? For me, it's the same. Uh, I don't care who I'm facing off against. I'm always excited to step inside the octagon, always uh, excited to show the world what I've been working on, whether it's Eddie or Cowboy or whoever, you know, it doesn't matter too much. When you look at the matchup, how do you say, okay, this is what I've got to gain from it? Where do you see yourself if you beat him? I don't really particularly see myself anywhere. I, I think it's up to UFC brass and these people and those people to talk about it and they can say, oh, well, the ranking's here, he just beat Cowboy, so he should be here, or yada, yada, yada. I try not to concern myself with that too much. I do have specific goals. I just want to beat the guy, whoever they place in front of me. What are some of those goals that you've got for yourself? One of the original goals was to have the belt for a uh, record number of times. I tied the record going on a, you know, big, long wing streak, uh, getting a belt in another division, perhaps, you know, a, a couple of things. Do you feel like, because Cowboy is getting a third shot at a fight with you, would a win over him warrant a third shot for you against Anthony Pettis? Uh, makes sense numbers wise. I beat Cowboy for a third time. He's on a big win streak and he's up there for a title shot. Uh, earns a, a third shot against Anthony Pettis. If he defends, he has to defend the belt uh, against Dos Anjos first. If not, getting a shot at him again, you know, I'll take that too. So will you stay a lightweight before this possible move to welterweight? I mean, walk me through this. Early in my career, I was very, you know, pretty adamant. Like, I didn't want to move anywhere. 55 is my weight class. I'm staying here. I'm gonna have the belt for a long time, that sort of stuff. There's some interesting matchups at 170, some big name fighters at 170 who I think would be you know, kind of cool to face off against. Some of the, the best fighters in the world are also at 170. It'd be interesting to prove how good I am if I can, you know, beat some of those guys at 170. Any particular guys you want to tell me about that you like watching that you could see yourself facing? In, any particular guys who might have retired and are thinking about coming back, oh, maybe? I, I don't like, know. Is he French-Canadian or something? I, I'm, I'm not Weird. sure. Just, I don't know who that could just be. Some, it's just some interesting matchups. But again, I, I don't want to think too far ahead in, uh, in advance. I'm, right. I'm focusing just on Donald. I want to prove I'm the best in the world. You know, by doing that, you have to beat the best in the world. So why not have fun and, and go do that? A masterful performance by the former UFC lightweight champion. So if they call you and they say, hey, Ben, we've got, uh, you know, this person fell off at welterweight, would you be willing to step in? That's something that might interest you then. At 155, I'll take on anybody, anyone, any place, doesn't matter. I can be anybody at 155. I, tomorrow, Anthony Pettis, six rounds, seven rounds, let's do it. I don't, I don't care. Dos Anjos, another five rounds, let's do that, you know. 170, might have to be a little more selective. <laughs> Those, those boys are kind of big, they're kind of dangerous. You know, they, they got a lot of power behind them. If they hit me up on a, a two week notice, I'm like, oh, that boy's kind of big. He walks around about 210. So lifting a bunch of weights. Yeah. <laughs> Tell me about your camp down at the MMA lab. Obviously you've been there for a long time. How much do they make a difference for you every day? My gym is huge as far as how much it has an impact on me, my training, uh, my coaching staff. Of course, I'm a little bit biased, but I do know that I have the best gym in the world at the MMA lab in Glendale, Arizona. Uh, all my boys are super dedicated. We're not the prettiest of bunch. We're not, we, we don't say the right things. We don't, you know, look the right way. Uh, but there's one thing we like is, is hard work. And not only do you have great training partners, but you've got a great coach. He's standing off camera right over here, John Crouch. Tell me a little bit about that relationship. He's been one of my, uh, I guess, you know, best friends for, for a while now. He uh, married my wife and I. He was the officiant. He got certified. I did not know that. Yeah. We just have a, a great relationship. Uh, it works, you know, personally. It works great professionally. It's turned out pretty well. And before I let you go, we were at open workouts. You and your opponent ran into each other, and it was like you were two old pals. Why can't friends fight? Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't see why not. Do you always have a friendly repertoire with your opponents, or is that just because you've known each other and had the WC time together? Uh, well, we know each other. Uh, we actually knew each other before he was in the WC. I got to watch him early in his career. He got to watch me early in my career. So we knew each other for a long time. Nice guy. I'm friendly with most all the 
all the opponents and you know we, we get along fine like we're not going to hang out and you know go do stuff together but right. there's no like real uh, bad blood between me and 98 percent of all of my opponents i'll probably say that's because you're one of the nicest guys in the game <laughs> thanks I, I try i guess <laughs> Well, it's working for you. Unfortunately, that's the end of our one round. We had five minutes on the clock, and that time is over. But cool. I appreciate you sitting down and talking to me. This is Ben Smooth-Henderson.